process of painting an aircraft, I mean, clearly it starts with the aircraft coming into the paint shop. And the one thing paint shop, our pay, all of our paint shops are, you know, are dedicated paint shops. We don't, we, we only paint aircraft. They are designed specifically for that purpose. Uh, and when we talk about the environmental impact of, of, of our activities, you know, the, the buildings have features and equipment installed in them to reduce the impact on, on the environment. Uh, so the aircraft arrives, pulls up outside the paint shop. Um, we have our own ground uh, handling capability, so we tow it in, in, into the paint shop. That's called input. Or And then uh, all of our paint shops are e equipped with... Um, scaffold it looks like a, a, a sophisticated scaffolding system called docking so the aircraft is then docked um, and once it's docked there's an inspection you know a pre-paint inspection and um, that's un usually undertaken by a qualified engineer um, and the, a com uh, who forms a comparison between the aircraft documentation and what he sees uh, you know the, the, every aircraft has got, has got what's called a, a dent and buckle chart uh, whereby every dent and every buckle in the, on the, the surface of the aircraft isn't is meant to be explained in that chart and if there's a new dent or a new buckle or a new ding it needs to be investigated as to how it got there uh, it's all part of, of obviously of of of, um, of, 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 of safety uh, routines so the aircraft comes in it's docked uh, or staged uh, and then there's a that there's a um, an input inspection after that uh, we then get to work um, and um, we mask the aircraft. Uh, all sensitive uh, parts of the aircraft, you know, piezo tubes, uh, static ports, all flight controls, uh, avionic controls on the external surface of the aircraft, they are all uh, protected with specific material that prevents any damage uh, uh, for, from, from the painting activity. Um, then we clean and we wash the aircraft. Um, uh, and then you start uh, uh, building up the coatings, you know, primer, uh, base coat, decoration coat, uh, technical markings. Um, uh, and then, you know, most aircraft these days, and when we talk about the advancement, uh, well, Richard can talk because he's, a, he, he's, he's got much more experience in the coatings industry than I have. Um, but but the, you know, over the last 10 years, nearly every aircraft is base coat, clear coat. So once the technical markings go on, which is all your safety notices, uh, you know, yeah, do not walk and all that kind of thing. Some some airlines and manufacturers require panel numbers to be to be also applied to to every part of the aircraft. Then the entire aircraft is sealed in a clear coat, uh, two coats of clear coat. Um, and then um, you know, obviously throughout the process, there's quality inspections. So mm -hmm. after every stage, uh, there's an inspection and it's signed off and stamped by an engineer. Um, because at the end of the process, you have what's called certified release to service, CRS. And in order for an aircraft to be certified to go back into service, it has to, the, the entire painting process has to be subject to uh, engineer, a qualified engineer's uh, oversight. Uh, so once the clear coat is applied, then the aircraft is demasked. Uh, then there's a customer acceptance inspection, the customer acceptance. Um, uh, then it's uh, de-docked, uh, you know, it's, it's removed from the docking system, pushed out of the paint shop and off it goes. So that's basically, you know, the, the process of painting a plane. So how, uh, long, anything... yeah, how long would that take? Is it, is it based on the, how complex the paint scheme is? It's based on how complex the paint scheme is, the paint products itself, the type of aircraft. You know, I mean, I know one of your questions is, I mean, a turboprop, I would say up to seven days. Um, I mean, for example, we're doing 737-800s, full strip and repaint, including wings, in five days. Um, now, we work 24 hours a day, uh, you know, three shifts a day, um, and we work as hard as we need to work to meet the customer's expectations. So it really depends upon the urgency, but generally speaking, it's a, it's a, it's a week. It's seven days would be your average turnaround Stop. time, TAT it's called. But then of course, if you have a particular complex livery, well then that's gonna add time. And of course, if you've got a particularly sensitive coatings materials, like for business jets, for example, which has to sit around for a long time in order to flash off as it's called to cure and to flow, you could be looking at up to 30 days depending upon them um, uh, you know uh, um, upon the um, you know the requirements of the customer but generally speaking for commercial painting commercial aircraft it's around a week curious me often it'd be long far longer than that 
<laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we work hard. <laughs> <laughs> and looking at like the paint schemes, I mean, have you found they're getting more complicated or for some of the airlines, you look at some of these one off or, you know. Well, Richard, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I'm, I mean, the some of some of the liveries are, are becoming more more complicated because everybody's trying to sort of um you know bring some kind of market into the table so we're doing a number of aircraft at the moment where they're putting special liveries on with graphics and some you know some with paint as well for 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 a given time and they're using it to to advertise a certain thing the paint systems themselves um you know they've become complex liveries for us are, are, are certainly more or e or easier to achieve with base with the base coat clear coat system the, these you know a, a, a base coat color is dry to tape within two to three hours whereas a high solids top coat was dry to tape in eight to ten hours so obviously you've still got to put put clear coat on the end of of this but it means if you've got four five six colors of a base coat, you can you can be doing that, and especially because we work in a shift pattern, twenty four hours a day. You know, it, it it's still something that we we can we can accommodate very easily. Um, at the moment, there's still a lot of aircraft be, being paid. What we're doing, we're getting a lot of requests for white as well, because of course a lot of aircraft are coming to the end of leases. They're all changing hands, and and the next the next lessee is not necessarily in place yet so they're all they're all getting the aircraft ready in white to then to maybe apply a livery later um so we're getting requests to apply livery to a white aircraft or or to apply um white um also one of one of the things that i, I don't know if you touched on tim but when the aircraft comes in the, the requests the requests come in two different forms really it's either a sand or a paint or a, or a complete strip and paint um, predominantly we strip. Um, so obviously the airframe itself um, is stripped, but then you've got, you know, all of the composite areas, the wing areas, the structural areas are all sanded. Um, and these have to be, you know, the, the coatings that go on them are, 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 are obviously all specified. Hmm. What we've seen in the last few years is that the structural repair systems um are probably more MRO friendly than they were in the past. So up till about 10, 15 years ago, and you'll know better than I for me, Tim, is that a lot a lot of the systems that were used in MRO were basically OEM systems, well, you know, the Airbus or or the Boeing system that they used in their in their facilities, which is not necessarily um, the most cost effective and fastest system for for MRO. Because you know the aircraft that comes in through um, an OEM aircraft has got already got base primer from all of the different areas where it's been manufactured in. Whereas in 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 MRO, what we do now is we strip it, then then the structural repair process goes into place, and this is this has changed over the last few years dr drastically with the introduction of bore gels and soccer gels um, now rather than wash primer. So. What you're seeing, especially on the on the cosmetic end of the aircraft, parts that are not classed as structural, <clears throat> there's no chrome, hardly any chrome anymore. You know, chromates. So um, there's still chromate products going on structural parts on wings and things, but on the on on the fuselage itself, it's all chrome-free technology. Yeah, I mean, I, I did miss out the whole stripping and, and sanding uh, stage in my. Uh in my introduction as to the process of painting a plane. So apologies for that. I mean, to go back to your, your question, Glenn, I mean, our, our livery is getting more complex. <clears throat> I mean, I think prior to COVID, yes was the answer because anyone with an Apple Mac, you know, with a Macintosh uh, was designing all these sexy liveries. And I think, uh, you know, each airline was trying to as uh, reinforce its brand or reinforce a particular event. I mean, you, you're probably very, you see Emirates and, and, um, um, and Etihad, you know, if there's a, a World Expo in, in Abu Dhabi or a Grand Prix in Bahrain or somewhere, uh, they would always, um, you know, mark that occasion. World Cup, I mean, the big thing is now the World Cup in Qatar. Um, so that there, were, there was a lot of kind of special liveries and liveries were getting increasingly more complex 
and the paint companies were producing a lot of mica material as well, which is a whole separate process in its application. Mica, you can't put metallic paint on an aircraft because of um, uh, static, you know, lightning strike and, 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 and anti-static. So the metallic is a fact is effect is called mica. It's a it's effectively a plastic fleck in in, right. in the coatings um, as opposed to, to, to metal. Um, it'd be interesting to see post COVID though. I, I mean, personally speaking, this is only a personal view. I would expect quite a lot of liveries to be dumbed down post COVID because they're cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, to be fair, I, I th to be fair, Tim, I think it's a fair point. I, th I think mm. if I look at four or five new startups that we've we've been given concept drawings, they're not particularly complex. Mm. To be fair, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, but we we apply whatever we're asked to apply, you know, and the process is is tailor is specific to to the to to, to the complexity, and the process is specific to the complexity. Uh, now we we also I mean recently we 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 we've done a um, a new uh, Boeing business jet, which of course is a one-off paint scheme. You know, so you always have uh, you know challenges along the way. Uh, every aircraft is a challenge. Actually, you're you're fighting against a process that is always trying to go wrong on you all the time. So um, experience is, is 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 important, and knowing how to avoid. Uh, problems is, is equally important, particularly when you're under pressure to get yeah. the aircraft out of the paint shop at a particular time.